Hi everyone, welcome to the Peach Payments webinar. Um, while we are waiting for everyone else to dial in, I would encourage you in the chat box to put down your name, um, your, your own name, your business name, maybe even pop in your business's URL, uh, introduce yourself to everyone here, and I'll kick us off in a few minutes. So for those of you that have just joined in the last few seconds, welcome to the Peach Payments webinar. We're super excited to host all of you today. Um, you are welcome to pop your name in the chat box. You can put down your business URL and your business name um, and introduce yourself to everyone. Hi, Rochelle from Trudy Blue. Nice to have you. Hi, Sebastian. Um, I will keep the chat box open for a few more minutes. Um, you're welcome to put down your name, your URL, uh, just a few housekeeping items before we get started. So like I said, the chat box will be open for a few minutes and then we'll close it off uh, just so we can all concentrate. My name is Clarissa. I'm the head of the Strategic Projects and Partnerships team at Peach. I'm super excited to be hosting this webinar today. I'm also joined by Kai Grasser, who uh, later on will be available during the Q&A, especially for any of your tricky technical questions. And then before our q and I'm also going to be chatting to Duncan Colville from TDMC in Durban, and we'll be chatting about some of the work they do and the benefits they've seen of adding multiple payment methods to some of their merchants. Awesome. Um, I can see a few more people saying hi in the chat box. Hi, everyone. Welcome. And for those of you who are maybe new to Peach, uh, new to this webinar before I get started, I just want to tell you a bit about who we are. Um, we make online commerce and digital payment acceptance easier and more accessible across Africa. We believe in the potential of Africa and aim to grow into more countries. We are based in Cape Town, South Africa. That's where I'm dialing in from today. And um, But we are also live in Kenya and Mauritius, and we have a team um, actually all over the world. We, combat a, we provide a complete toolkit to accept, manage, and disperse payments through web and through mobile. We offer Shopify, Wix, WooCommerce, and Magento card plugins, as well as API and mobile SDK. So with that, I am gonna close off the chat. And we are going to get started. All right, so welcome everyone to our Payment Methods webinar. We're super excited to have you all here. We're also super excited to see some of our partners that we're going to be talking about online as well. Um, so just a bit of an overview again around Peach. We've got multiple payment methods. These are the integrations I mentioned already. Um, and we've got some of our features on this side. Um, you can see the screenshot in the middle. And this is really what we're gonna be talking about today, the multiple ways to get paid. So when we say multiple ways to get paid, what do we mean? So we all know about card payments, credit card payments, debit card payments. That is the most popular way to pay for goods and services online. I think we all know that. It's probably for many of us dialing in. That's what we use when we buy items online. However, we at Peach have seen over time that there's a demand for other types of payment methods. There's a demand for buy now, pay later, which is often referred to as BNPL. There's a demand for instant EFTs, sometimes called pay by bank. Um, a demand for alternative credit lines or credit options or purpose-based lending when buying online, as well as voucher payment services, particularly for individuals who don't have a credit card or a debit card or may not have a bank account or don't want to use those details when shopping online. So today we're going to unpack each of these, the each of these types. And then afterwards we'll be chatting to Duncan um, a bit more about how he sees these in action. Okay, so we'll kick off with buy now, pay later. Very trendy. I'm sure all of you have heard about buy now, pay later in some form or the other. Um, it can be very confusing with how it works. 
Uh, it's very similar to a credit card installment. So what happens is a shopper can buy something through buy now, pay later. So let's say load shedding is hit and you need a UPS device to keep uh, your Wi-Fi on during your load shedding. You may not want to put all of that on your credit card straight away. You may want to delay payment of that UPS, let's say it's 2,000 Rand over a few weeks or maybe over a few months. And that's where buy now, pay later is really powerful because you can select one of these options and you as the shopper can only pay for a portion of the item up front, receive the item, and then have delayed payments down the line. And the fantastic part about this is that merchants get paid up front. So even though the shopper is paying installments every few weeks or every few months, the merchant gets all of their money up front and they're able to ship the good like they would with a regular credit card payment. So that's really powerful. Uh, we have two buy now pay laters uh, with Peach. Uh, we are super excited about both of them. We have zero pay. So zero pay, um, you repay in three installments, one third at the point of purchase, and then a month later on the 1st or 15th, and then the month thereafter. And we also have Payflex. And Payflex, you pay in four installments. So you would pay a quarter upfront, and then you'd pay two weeks later, two weeks later, two weeks later. Um, they're both really fantastic buy now, pay later partners. They send shoppers reminders about their upcoming charge um, via email or via SMS. And uh, for merchants, they're also open to marketing, offering certain discounts based on your needs. So we're really excited to have them as partners and to offer both of them to our merchants so that our merchants can reach a wide shopping base. So those are our two buy now, pay later partners, and we'll review all of them and we'll have time for Q&A as well. Uh, but that's really buy now, pay later in a nutshell. The next payment type I'm going to talk about is instant EFT or pay by bank. So some merchants may have Peach Payments as a gateway or some type of gateway, and they also offer shoppers the option to do what we call an old school EFT, where you'd have to get a bank account number, a branch number, the bank name, double check you've typed it in correctly, you're sending an EFT, maybe you have to pay or download, email a proof of payment. It's a lot of admin and there's a lot of risk about not entering the right account number or the right branch code. Um, that kind of old school EFT is solved here in instant EFT, where instead of having to type in all that all those details and exit your browser and go to your banking page and email a proof of payment, it's all done in our checkout flow. So again, let's talk about this UPS device you're buying online. If you want to pay for it straight from your bank account, you would simply go and click instant EFT. It would present you with the major South African banks. I bank with FNB. I would click on FNB. It prompts me to log into my FNB account on the same screen. So I'm not getting redirected anywhere. Um, I enter my personal details. I buy the item. I would still get a notification on my phone from FNB to authenticate the transaction to make sure it's really me that's buying the item. And the purchase goes through. The money is taken off my account sent to Peach. Peach will then send it on to the merchant. Uh, the merchant gets a notification straight away with their reference number. So it's just a much faster, more secure way of paying with items if you don't want to pay with a credit card. We actually find a Peach uh, businesses that are sort of B2B businesses, so businesses buying goods for their business really enjoy this instant EFT option because uh, they want to use their business bank account to buy something online. So this is a really great payment method. Um, if we want to see sort of what it looks like, this is the logo, Instant EFT um, by Peach Payments. Another fantastic benefit about Instant EFT is it's only 1.5%. So most of you would be used to paying about 2.95% on a credit card transaction, whereas with Instant EFT, it's almost half of that amount. So we've done, we've gone through buy and I'll pay later. We've gone through instant EFT. Oh, sorry, we just have one more slide on the stats of instant EFT. So it is our second most popular payment option. Like, uh, like we said, for certain users that may not have a card or a credit card or don't want to put those details online, uh, they tend to use instant EFT. So we really recommend adding it uh, to your storefront. We're then going to go through alternative credit. 
as a group of payments. So what do we mean by alternative credit? That's a really broad term. So this could be similar to a revolving loan or a short-term loan or purpose-based lending where you're making use of an alternative credit line. So not necessarily a credit card from your bank, but a credit line from another financial institution to buy a good or service online. So instead of having to go out and get a 25,000 Rand loan from somewhere and then using that loan to try buy something online, that entire flow is all bundled together in the checkout experience for the shoppers. So if they're perhaps a UPS in this load sharing example, um, hasn't worked and someone wants to buy a solar panel or a generator and that item is 15,000 Rand or 25,000 Rand, they can still buy it online and go through this credit application process while buying it online and not having to exit or do a completely different application or fill out any paperwork. So we have two alternative credit line options. We have MobiCred. MobiCred is a really well-known, reputable brand. I think they've been around for over a decade. They're also backed by BNP Paribas, so um, really reputable brand. Uh, for the merchant, it costs to about 3%, so very similar to card. And what would happen when someone's buying something through MobiCred is they buy the item on your website, They'd go to the Peach Payments checkout page. They'd select MobiCred. If they already have a MobiCred account, they can log in straight away and the amount of the item will be deducted from their account. If they don't have a MobiCred account, they very quickly complete one. They enter basic information. It takes just a few minutes. Uh, an account will be created for them and the amount of the item will be deducted from their account. They have then entered a contract with MobiCred where they will repay for this item over time. What's really great about MobiCred is once they've opened an account with MobiCred, they can use that same account to buy something else later on. So perhaps they buy a solar panel from one merchant and a mattress from somewhere else. So it's a really fantastic extra credit line. Um, got a ton of different use cases, be it fashion, homeware, uh, really anything. We also have offered Pin Choice Pay. This is a very new uh, payment type that we're super excited about. And you can see here the reason why this is actually free for all of our merchants. So if someone buys something through FinChoice Pay on your website, you will not be charged for it. So a normal credit card transaction, you'd be charged 2.95%. With FinChoice Pay, you aren't charged anything. They cover the cost for you. So we're really excited about that, especially for our merchants who have lower margins or who are looking to have a big sale, this is a really fantastic payment type. Uh, similarly, if a customer is buying something off your site through FinChoice Pay, they'll go through the flow, they'll get presented with the checkout street screen, they'll click FinChoice Pay, they'll enter various information, their name, ID number, their income. Without leaving the page once, they'll go through that whole flow and then right at the end, if they're approved, the purchase is successful, the merchant can ship the good to the shopper and the shopper is then entered into a contract with Finch Voice Pay and they'll pay for this item in three months or six months or a nine month or a 12 month installment and they'll get an interest rate um, relevant to their risk profile. So again, these are two really fantastic payment types to add to your store, particularly if you have a higher than average basket size, but it doesn't. there's no harm in adding them even if you don't because you only pay for them if someone uses them. Um, so those are our alternative credit types. And then our final version is voucher payments. So kind of um, think of a different type of consumer. Um, this type of consumer maybe doesn't have a debit card or credit card, or they don't wanna enter those details online. So perhaps you know a friend or family member who doesn't want to enter this information online, but they need to buy something, uh, you could buy them a one voucher. So you could go to one voucher's website and buy them a one voucher. It'll then give them a token. So very similar to a, a gift card, give them a token. They then go to a merchant's website, go click checkout. They see one voucher, they click on one voucher. All they have to do is enter their token, enter their cell phone number, They'll then get an SMS confirmation with an OTP that they'd enter to make sure it's actually them using the token. And then the transaction has gone through. 
um, and the item can get shipped off to the shopper. If someone has a voucher, let's say for 300 Rand and they're buying something that's only 250 Rand, um, it still works very similarly to a gift card. They'll buy the item for 250 Rand and then they'll get SMSed a new voucher for 50 Rand. So that's really, really great way to kind of empower someone to buy items online. You could buy them a voucher and then they can use that to buy several items from di several different peach merchants. Um, so again, really excited about the power of one voucher. Um, it costs 4.5%. So slightly more than credit card again, because that's reaching a whole different customer base. One voucher also does lots of education and awareness and marketing. Um, they have a ton of collateral. So we're really excited to see this grow. Um, it is going to become live towards the end of this year. So we'll be starting with a pilot. So if you'd like to be part of the pilot merchants uh, that get one voucher enabled first in your storefront, you can simply let us know and you can email our support at Peach Payments address and um, we'll make sure you're part of that pilot group. So just comparing all the options together, this can be quite an overwhelming slide, but I think it's really important for the merchant to see the cost, uh, to also see what the cost is to the shopper. And don't worry about taking a screenshot or writing all of this down. This is all on our fees page on our website. So if you Google Peach Payments Fees, um, you'll see all of this information on our site. And again, if you have any questions or you're a little bit confused about the different costs or you're already seeing it on your Peach uh, Payments billing on your invoices, you can always email us and we'll help you clarify. Right, so um, without any further ado, we are gonna move into the next segment of this webinar. So we've discussed the various payment methods. We're now gonna be uh, chatting with Duncan from TDMC. Um, so Duncan, hi, it's great to have you here. Hey, Clarissa, thanks so much for having me today. And hello everyone, thank you for joining. Um, obviously super informative, uh, learning about the different methods. Um, yeah, as, as TDMC, um, we've been working with Peach for almost four years now. Um, it's been a great journey for us. So um, when I was invited to come along and, and uh, share a bit of insight um, from what I've seen over the past few years, uh, I was very happy to jump in and give the guys a hand. Um, I'd just like to give you all a little introduction to TDMC. Uh, so TDMC are based in Durban, as Clarissa mentioned earlier. We have another office uh, operating in Hampshire, just outside of London, and have recently uh, opened another office up in the US uh, to support our app development business um, a little bit more. So we get a little bit more insight, um, obviously, before new technology sort of hits our shores. Um, collectively, as a business, TDMC is a performance marketing and development house. Uh, we have been operating for nine years. Uh, we are owner managed and run. So our MD and myself and three fellow directors are actively involved in the business, new builds, uh, onboarding, as well as um, obviously learning and sharing new knowledge with our team, um, which now constitutes of just over 50 people in Durban, um, which is yeah very, very different scenario to where we were at the beginning of COVID. Um, just seeing the growth through lockdown has been absolutely phenomenal. Um, just to run briefly through some of our services, uh, we are accredited by Shopify. So uh, for those of you that um, have Shopify stores, if you're ever looking for a hand with anything or looking for a new build, um, if you go to Shopify and actually look in the experts directory, you'll see that we are one of four accredited partners uh, on the continent. We're also um, the only pseudo plus partner for enterprise level uh, businesses. So that is Shopify plus um, size builds, normally businesses that are um, exceeding maybe 12 to 15 million a month online. Um, from a development perspective, uh, so as I've mentioned Shopify quite a bit, it is our uh, uh, bread and butter from a development perspective. However, we do have um, an app and connected development team um, and we do build custom storefronts as well, um, as well as a few um, sort of ad hoc projects, if I could put it that way, with very specialized payment gateway related requirements, such as uh, subscription services, not for Shopify, but um, for, for certain applications. Then uh, moving across to the uh, performance component of our business, we are Meta certified. 
uh, as well as Google Premium partners with uh, both companies. We actually sit within the top 3% of agencies on the continent. Uh, we have direct lines with both businesses because of the type of clientele that we service. Um, and just also because of um, the level of certification that we have with them, we do try to keep up to speed. Um, we do all of the required examinations um, and just go back to Shopify, uh, as well as MailChimp and Clavio, who we are, are partners with. Um, we are also audited pretty much on a monthly basis just to ensure that we are still delivering um, the best quality service or, or products that we can. Um, just to, to dive a bit deeper, so uh, I know quite often people talk about performance marketing. Um, it is, well, was what was once considered a bit of a gray area, but from a, a, a service perspective, we do not do creative. We very much focused on getting our customers return on investment. Um, we do that through paid search campaigns. So paid search being traditional Google ads, uh, Google shopping, YouTube campaigns, programmatic uh, looking at lead generation services, both from a uh, social media perspective, as well as a Google perspective. And um, over the past year and a half or so, we have started working more and more within the influencer marketing space. Um, interestingly, um, our strategy is slightly different. We are not after the big influencers. We look for um, almost micro influencers with a, uh, I would say, a more targeted audience. And we found quite a bit of... Uh, benefit for, for a lot of our uh, customers that are looking to, to sort of leverage uh, these influences. And uh, finally, TDMC, as a business, we do offer very basic SEO. However, we do have a partner agency that we work with called Tailored Digital. Um, they are all Google trained uh, out of Europe. Um, and we work quite collectively with them uh, just in terms of, um, you know, assisting our clients, both from a performance aspect, so the paid side, which is us, but also to try and improve their organic ranking, um, you know, without trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes, the guys at Taylor Digital um, actually show you the growth um, and show you the strategies that, that are put in place. And that, that's pretty much a, a, a very brief intro on who we are. Um, as, as a team at Peach know, I can talk a lot, so I'm trying to hold back a little bit. <laughs> Uh, Thanks, Duncan. Great. And it's, it's cool. you know, it's it's so fascinating for us because we run the payments and there's so much involved in payments. It's payments, it's refunds, it's reconciliation, um, it's queries. And just hearing, you know, obviously everything we know that the TDMC does, it's so much. And I think for someone who's starting a business online or they've maybe had a business for a few months or a few years and they're really wanting um, to grow um, and perhaps some of them are dialed into this webinar and they're hearing about all these payment methods and also about SEO and now they're thinking about micro-influencing. What would you advise um, a merchant like that? Like where should they start if they're looking to grow their business and grow different ways to get paid? How would you advise them? What would be some of your pointers? Sure. I think the first thing to look at um, from our perspective, I mean, if, if you haven't built a site as of yet, but um, is just to make sure that that whatever product you're selling, that you are first of all going to be able to get that to the customer. Um, and secondly, just off the back of that, and I, I know it sounds ridiculous to say this first, but customer service is paramount. So what we've we've actually found is that there's some fantastic websites and amazing products, but the reality is that the customer service is where the, the, the fail happens. And honestly, it, it takes a review or two for a business to, you know, uh, just sort of be squashed into the ground if i could put it that way and just on top of that um you know there there's a lot of false information um floating around out there um about you know how how do you promote your brand and this and that and you know one one of the the sort of components that well one of the discussions i keep seeing coming up in a couple different uh, forums that i'm involved in is um around organic to be very honest with everyone and, and just to define organic, sorry, that is uh, just traditional posting, uh, whether it be on Facebook or Instagram and so on. Organic is probably only seen by about 1%. Um, so, I mean, uh, of, of your followers or um, your sort of serial likers and so on. So to put that in context, if, if you're looking at a page that maybe has 10,000 likes, you, you need to understand that maybe only 1% are actually going to see that content itself. 
Um, and to take it even further, out of that 1%, you might find that only 1% will actually engage and follow through to your site. So the piece of advice that I can give to people is if you, if you cannot afford to use a specialist um, media buyer, for lack of better words, um, I would say do your research and teach yourself how to manage your budgets and advertise correctly online. All of the different platforms that we work with, um, you know, whether whether it be Shopify or Meta um, or uh, you know Google, they are businesses at the end of the day, and they want to make money. And the way that they make their money is through advertising. So for them, mm -hmm. it is in their best interest, or I suppose it is in their best interest um, for you to spend. And what they're going to do is they're going to start to reduce that organic um, sort of content, organic viewing more and more and more as the years sort of progress now um, to try and, and sort of strong arm merchants into actually advertising with them. It's, it's not necessarily a bad thing, but what I, I would recommend is making sure that you have a sufficient budget. Um, you know, quite often we will have, you know, potential customers that come through and they'll say we have a 3000 Rand budget for the month. And I know for a lot of small businesses, it seems like a lot of money. But if you take into account that, say, say you want to run a social campaign, say you want to run a Google campaign at the same time, that would then um, obviously reduce that because you would need to split that spend between the two. So it would be 1500 um, sort of per site. And when you start breaking that down into sort of daily uh, ad spend, you know, if we take 3000 Rand divided by an average month of, of 30 days, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a very, very small budget across these and what i would recommend is instead of um maybe taking revenue and um you know buying this well obviously buying stock is important but um you know buying non-essential items or non-essential applications for your store um my recommendation would be to try and take whatever margin you have obviously still be able to pay yourself but reinvest that back into advertising and start to grow the business that way um, yeah, so so it's a bit of a, a, a process in the sense that um, you do need money to make money. You don't need yeah. a lot. So please, please don't get me wrong um, when I obviously talk about smaller budgets, but you know, there, there are alternatives. Like one of, one of my recommendations that I often make is maybe instead of trying to run product ads, for example, why not run a lead generation campaign so that you can actually acquire customer data so it sits in your database and you can send them emailers or SMSs or push notifications um, and try and actually get those people to convert. So then you can then take that information of physical or real converting customers and then reuse that data back into the different um, platforms to build lookalike audiences. So people that look and behave like your current customers to obviously further entice them to come yeah. through. Yeah. So I think, yeah, from a, yeah. And I think Duncan, that's such a great point you're touching on around that um, loyal customer acquisition costs. So I know when mm. uh, we, we've we had a few merchants as we've added our, for example, our buy now, pay later payment methods. Um, and initially merchants might be concerned that it's more than card, but what we can see is sometimes someone comes through your store and they buy something through one of our buy now pay later partners and they may actually restore return to your store again and buy with card or maybe an instant EFT so it's actually in a way um, even if your margins are low it's a really great way to get a loyal customer who may come back again and, and buy with card absolutely and I mean you know I, I, I know when when we've had our discussions uh obviously for our, our usual meetings, um, one, of, one of the points that I've seen and one of the points that I do push across to customers is, yes, some of the payment gateways, it may seem quite high, um, just in terms, you know, where it's, it's anywhere between, say, 3 to 5% um, of your sale plus a little bit extra. But exactly as you've said now, Clarissa, um, at the end of the day, you are um, not only just selling a, a product, but actually acquiring customer data. And we can see just from from the number of stores that we actively manage the power of that returning customers is absolutely insane i mean for some of our stores we see a 41 to 50 percent returning customer rate um, and the reality is as we see that start to increase we also start to see the conversion rates increasing 
Yeah. So let's just say theoretically I come through and uh, place an order with one of the uh, Barnal pay later services. And um, it's great that you're talking about solar, uh, obviously in Durban, um, you know, anyone that's in solar in Durban at the moment is probably going to be a multimillionaire by February uh, with the rate that we're going with power cuts. But solar, for example, is a very expensive um, investment and it is an investment. However, we found that people will start to use these buy now, pay later services. And it doesn't necessarily mean that at the end of their term, that they'll come back and use that same service again. It might just be because they need something now. Um, and that gives you an opportunity to obviously upsell to them or to encourage them to come back. And, you know, uh, maybe 50% of the time that user will come back and then choose a more direct method like instant EFT or credit card later down the line. But yeah, yeah from a, a customer acquisition viewpoint, um, I, I, I know I haven't touched on this yet, but, but we're even seeing, uh, especially in our... Uh, I would say higher end clients, um, anywhere, anywhere up to 40%, uh, well, yeah, up to 40% of all sales actually coming from bar now, pay later services. And I also think that that gives us a little bit of a, an overview of maybe the macroeconomic climate in South Africa. Well, not just South Africa at the moment, but you know, money is tight for people, but they still have needs, wants and desires that need to be fulfilled. And by giving customers more payment options and more opportunity to shop within their available budgets, you know, we, we really are yeah, encouraging people to buy. Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. And I think that was such a big part of why we also wanted to have this webinar now. Black Friday is coming up and it's a really great time um, for merchants to have these payment methods added to their stores. Um, and if, you know, they're maybe looking to really boost their sales, they can also reach out to the TDMC team. Um, I'm yeah, going to move to, yeah, I'm going to move to Q&A. So um, please do feel free to send through your questions in the Q&A box. We did actually get some questions um, from our support channel beforehand. So I'm just going to read them out here because um, I think these are some really common questions that people may have. Um, so we often get asked, what if I add a payment method, but nobody uses it? What will I pay? Um, so we don't have any monthly fee for these payment methods. There isn't an extra charge to activate them um, it's free to add them and you only pay when people use them which is really great so um, you kind of see the benefit if someone starts to use payflex a lot that's fantastic you'll pay but you know you're going to be getting the increased basket sizes or if you start to see one voucher uh, services being used uh, to buy goods from your website then you'll only pay um, again if they're being used um, we had another question. Someone asked, what if I want to remove a payment method in the future? That's that's totally fine. We fully believe in flexibility and what works for your business. So maybe you were selling something with a high margin, but down the line, you're selling different items that have a lower margin and you no longer want these extra payment methods. You can simply email support at Peach Payments and we will uh, remove that payment method for you. And if you want to add it back on in a few months time that's also totally fine you can you can do that too um, we often get asked about refunds so someone said how do refunds work for these different payment methods um, so for our buy now pay later partners because it runs on credit card rails it's very similar to credit card you're able to initiate a refund as a merchant um, with one voucher what happens is once the item is returned, uh, the shopper just gets presented with a new voucher. And then with our other payment partners, it's also the same. Once an item is returned, um, you can process the refund in your merchant console. And if you're not able to, you can reach out to Peach and we can assist and make sure between the partner and yourselves and the shopper that the item has been returned and we can process the refund. Um, we have one last question on our emails and then I'll get to the questions I've been asked in the Q&A. Um, how do I add the logos of these brands to my website or where can I get information about them? So we've got all of our partners' logos um, on our Peach support articles. So you can just Google Peach payments logo, uh, payment logos um, and you'll see it come up and we will also email that uh, hyperlink afterwards. Uh, so if you do want to add their logos to your store, once you've added the payment methods, then you can do so. Um, okay, so I'm going to read out the questions that we're getting. Um, so I have a question from Sebastian. 
can any of these work with or integrate with your multi-currency service, which we currently use? Um, Sebastian, that's a great question. Um, I'm going to say yes, we can for our normal card and debit card. For some of these, uh, we can't just because they are local providers. Um, but what we will do is we will go back to our support team um, and send you a full comprehensive email just so you have an answer to that question. Awesome. Um, I'm going to leave the line open for a few minutes. If anyone else has a question, please do feel free to pop it into the Q&A. Or if you have a question for Duncan as well around anything performance marketing and um, e-commerce trends, please do pop it in the Q&A. Um, and while we're waiting for another question, I'm just going to read one more that we got sent to us. Um, well, this is actually something that we get quite frequently and it's around what are the payment methods we're going to be adding. So we sometimes get asked about Snapscan or Zapper or you know various other voucher types that are out there. Um, we added five new payment methods this year, which we're really excited about. Um, we intend to add many more next year to the stable of payment methods that we offer. If you have um, a really big need for a certain payment method, please do email us. Um, let us know. We're always on the lookout. I think we've got a, a list of 26 different payment partners we're currently chatting with and doing some biz dev with. Um, so please do send those through to us and we will investigate and keep adding and adding to the basket you can you can have. Okay. Uh, we have a question from Carl. Carl has said, how important is PayPal? Are we losing sales by not accepting it? Um, Carl, I think that really depends on the business you have. PayPal has a strong um, international audience. So if that's the type of audience you're looking to, to reach out for, we'd really encourage you to, to add PayPal. We do have a PayPal integration. Um, so you can email us and we, we can chat to you about your, pay, uh, your PayPal options. Um, it is limited to certain merchants depending on your merchant account. So we can work on that with you. Um, we have a question from Ian Roberts. Can we now do automatic recurring billings per month and on an annual basis? Um, Kai, do you want to answer this question? Just give me one second. I'm just going to take off my headset. And Hi there again. Sorry, I'm having technical difficulties at the moment. Um, so yes, you will be able to, it all depends on your integration and this is the acquiring service that you currently are using. But yes, you can, um, this, the, the subscription billing or recurring billing model that you need to set up is really held by you and what that frequency looks like. Awesome. Thanks for the question, Ian. And um, we have a question from Caitlin Cox. So Caitlin has asked, do you offer retails and omni-channel experience in store and online? So this is something currently we're investigating. We have traditionally been an online only business, um, but we are investigating this as we're aware that this is a growing need uh, if you have both offline and online. Um, so Caitlin, um, it is something that's in the works, not currently alive yet, but we are um, looking at ways that we can help our merchants who also want to have a retail footprint. All right. Um, and then we have a question from Ian Roberts. Is it possible to generate separate payment links or client invoice to include in SMS and email reminders? Um, I'm not 100% sure about this. I don't know if it's uh, separate payment links over client invoice or client invoice to include an SMS email reminders. We are working on SMS and email reminders as part of our payment link service. Um, so please do keep an eye on that. We are really in this quarter Q4 and next year Q1 um, working on improving our payment links that will be sent out of our new dashboard. 
Um, so uh, yes, it's something we're working on um, to improve. Um, and then I can also see um, there is a message in the chat um, so from Giselle. Um, so this is around settlement and the money being in your account, Giselle. This is also really great feedback. Thank you. Um, we are also working on this. We are working on more frequent settlements so that um, you don't have to wait um, for the end of the week to get settled and then shook your good. Um, we are, it is something we're working on. It's, it's not something that's going to be live anytime soon, Giselle. So we can let you know as soon as it's live. Um, but we will also take a look into your, I'm sure you've got an open application with us um, and we'll make sure to explain that in more detail uh, in email to you. Okay. Um, looks like that is everyone in terms of Q&A. Oh, I can see another Q&A from Sebastian. What other options are there for payments for international users whose banks do not use OTP for card transaction? We have several US and India clients who experience this. Kai's gonna answer this question for you, Sebastian. Hi, Ian. Um, so with card payments, we, we all know that everything is moving towards 3DS2. So the, the schemes are really enforcing that across all banks. And whether they receive an OTP or whether they receive an in-app authentication, this should not be a hindrance anymore. Uh, previously, it has been with BDS1, and, and that was always a concern uh, because in South Africa, it is mandated that all transactions go through 3D. Um, and this is a, a should be addressed from now on to moving forward, which is being enforced from Saturday onwards. I hope that answers your question, and, and you're also happy to um, contact us directly afterwards so we can chat through any other questions you may have. Cool. Um, and I can see, Giselle, that Josh, our head of um, SME and marketing, has also popped you an answer in our chat on our enterprise plan, which does settle daily. So if you do want to take a look at becoming an enterprise merchant and getting settled daily, that's definitely an option for you. Um, and we, we, can, we can assist you with that. All right. And then uh, I'm just going to move on a little bit to some upcoming and exciting initiatives that we have planned. So some of them I've spoken about already, um, just based on the questions that we getting so we have been improving our documentation hub this is now live this is the place you can go if you need to make changes to your integration depending on your integration type of us you may need to make a few changes to add some of these payment methods however if you are using checkout so if you have a shopify or wix or woocomer store and um, all you need to do is email us email support at peach payments and tell us which payment method you want added uh, and we'll automatically add it for you and email you back with confirmation in terms of conditions. Otherwise, the documentation hub is the right place to go um, to view various articles and instructions. And then two other items we have that we're really excited about. So our payment links um, will be sort of relaunching in Q1 of next year. Uh, this is where you can email or SMS someone a link to pay you and it opens up um, on their phone or computer. Uh, we had a question earlier around reminders on this. So that is something that is going to be scoped as part of, as part of the work for Q1. And linked, that was an unattended pun, linked to our um, payment links is our new dashboard. So what, how it would work is you'd log into this new dashboard that we built, which is way more user-friendly. We've taken lots of feedback from merchants on its redesign. You can see a transaction listing. You can download transactions if you prefer analyzing them in a different in Microsoft Excel or somewhere else. And in your dashboard, you can also send payment links to customers um, and you can link to the correct reference um, and track whether it's pending or whether the person's paid you. That's where you'd be able to send a reminder as well. So we're super excited about our dashboard. It's been a really long time um, coming and our teams have been working really hard on this. So 
those are some of the things to look forward to in Q1 next year. Um, this, this year, we really focused on getting all of these amazing payment methods um, through with our amazing partners. Um, and again, if you have any questions, um, please do email support at each payment. You can even just on the subject line, maybe put the word webinar, and then we'll know you've come from the webinar and maybe some of these are follow on um, and we'll give priority to them. And I also want to say thank you to Duncan from TDMC for joining us today and, and uh, giving us some insights into e-commerce. So Duncan, thanks so much for joining us. Um, Pleasure. Perhaps, perhaps in the chat box, if you want to enter TDMC's details for anyone who's looking for your services, um, I'll let you sure. pop that in there now. Okay. okay. Great. Thanks, Duncan. So any merchants who maybe think you might want a little bit of help from TDMC and some of your marketing, um, please do reach out to them. We can vouch that they're a really fantastic partner. Um, and if you want to chat to us about any of these payment methods or any of our upcoming um, initiatives or improvements that we're making, please do email us. And thank you so much uh, for your time. I know we're ending a little bit earlier. Um, so you're welcome, you're welcome to hop off. I hope this was really helpful for you. If you do have more questions for us, I'm going to stay on still um, for another 10 minutes. Kai will stay on with me as well. So you're welcome to just pop them in this chat box and Q&A. Thank you so much. We have a message from Garen. Garen's asked, how long does it take to get started from scratch? And I've provided with a plugin I just use on my website. Do I need a new merchant account or do I only need a peach account? Um, Garen, actually, I'll maybe see if I can unmute you and then maybe we can chat. Let me know if that worked. I think you'll be able to chat with us now and then you can chat with me and Kai. So maybe we can just ask, uh, answer this correctly. Mm -hmm. in, in terms of when you say from scratch, are you referring to where you've got a website already ready and now you're ready for a payment gate? So if it's from that side, then in terms of an onboarding process, setting up the plugin, it all depends on really your own devs capability or the actual uh, platform that you're using. But generally, we have seen merchants go live within the actual day itself. Um, and as long as all documents are, are set up and, and you're satisfied with the testing that you've done, you know, we can actually see merchants going live on that same day. That answers all of your questions. And so we have a question from Eric. Hi, I also want to get started. I have a Shopify website. Yeah, that's Hi. great. We love Shopify. Um, so it's the same steps. Yeah, it is. Um, submit an application through to our sales team. Our sales team will then start the actual onboarding process and go through it. And it's nice and easy. There's a few clicks. You are then linked to each. It's, it's not actually, you don't have to really um, do any dev work in that respect. It is one of the easiest integrations out there. Yeah. The best is to go to the website and click the Get Started. Exactly. Yeah. And the great thing about Shopify is that um, the Peach Payment Gateway um, has what we call checkout. So once your Shopify store is live with us, and um, we can add all of the payment methods that we spoke about today, or you can just simply let us know which ones you want us to add, and then we will add those ones for you but yeah getting started is the best thing or you can email the support of each payments great thanks eric let us um know again and just if you get stuck um we'll, we'll be there to support you okay i can see our awesome peach uh, social team has also popped the link on getting started so for anyone else on the call um who's who's looking you can use that link from peach payments uh, each payments resources forward slash get started. Awesome. I think that's uh, everything. Mm -hmm.
So guys, I'm gonna end this webinar. Thank you again so much uh, for your time, for all of your questions. Thanks to our partners for um, dialing in as well. And uh, we hope you have a great day. And again, please email support at Peach Payments if you need any other support. Thanks everyone. Thanks a lot, everybody. Thanks, Duncan. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks.